Welcome to Second Opinion, the Refuse Show here on the Nexus. Today, Brian Mitchell, Brandon Johnson, Ian Arbuck, and Ryan Represent will be sharing their experiences with Gboard for iOS and Google Keyboard for Android. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO6. So this, we've got more people on here than usual. Yeah. But that's okay. It's we great. Do. Yeah. Because we're going to kind of split it uh, between the Gboard and the Google Keyboard parts. Two sides fight. <laughs> uh, choose your character. Keyboard and Gboard. So I think we should probably start with Gboard since that one I think technically came out first. Officially came out first. Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we're talking about the update versus the point, the what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so iOS dudes, talk about Gboard. Hi, that's me, and Brandon. That's so, me too. Gboard, it came out what last week sometime. I don't really there wait. Enough. May twelfth. There we go. Yeah. Um, I saw it. I downloaded it. I installed it. I tried it for a few minutes, and I deleted it. And then Ian posted in Slack saying, "Hey, Gboard, this app came out. Uh, does anyone want to use it and do this with me?" I'm like, "All right, sure, I'll do it." So I downloaded it again. So traditionally, That's really funny. That's really funny because I did almost the exact same thing. I was just about to delete it, and then I saw you guys talking about it, and I was like, maybe I'll give it another shot. Uh, and sure enough, I did, and here we are. And and now I can... So traditionally with iOS keyboards, um, I have also had the, the US English keyboard, the stock Apple one, also installed. So I'd always have to switch to the third-party one, meaning there would always be a delay. But when I remove it, it's the default, and thus there is very little delay, and it's actually usable. That's the main reason why I haven't used third-party keyboards. And this keyboard tries to emulate the stock Apple One very well. Well, or tries to emulate it closely. It does a pretty good job with it. Right, right. I had a pretty similar experience, too. So um, I, I actually do leave the stock uh, Apple keyboard on my list, but I rearranged it so that G- Gboard is the default somehow magically i'm not 100 percent sure how that how effectively i did that but it seems to be working pretty well now the trick uh trick is when i'm using it in slack particularly the latency is just like awful it takes about three to five seconds before the keyboard pops up so i'm you know it's almost like i have a bluetooth keyboard and it's like wait what yeah Where's... there's definitely some latency still wow yeah I, i'm noticing that now that's yeah that's a huge reason why i haven't really used third-party keyboards so how how experienced are you with, with third-party keyboards I used Nintype for a while, which is a ridiculous, psychedelic, swipey keyboard. It looks pretty cool, and it's kind of fun, and I kind of wish I could master it because it looks just so out there. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes. But um, yeah, there's a delay, and it's too much. The keyboard is a lot to handle, and this one is a little more laid back, and so that's good. Um, But otherwise, I miss things like holding over a character to do the extended character sets. So, you know, an A with the dot circle mm-hmm. above it or the O with the slash for when I type some Danish to some of my family. Um, so that so that doesn't exist in the Gboard either? Uh, no, it does exist oh, in the Gboard. Okay. And there have been some other apps that I used that that did not exist for because the keyboard maker has to explicitly make that feature. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's another extra thing that most people probably don't use. Right. So on my end, I, I used for a while the text expander keyboard. Um, I only used it in very particular situations uh, where I wanted to use text expander, of course, which is a Mac app, rather legendary one that allows you to essentially set shortcuts based on little um, essentially cues you can send to the app, and it'll pass back a whole big wall of text when you actually just type three characters. That was really awesome when I was working in technical support because um, I had a lot of stuff basically three characters away. Um, so like if I was setting up a remote support session with somebody, I could, instead of having to write out the actual response, I could just do three characters and it would work. The trick is, as Brian said, the latency, the lack of features on that keyboard made it that I, did, I really didn't want to use it unless I absolutely had to. Um, so I usually just ended up uh, using Text Expander mostly on my Mac, where I, it will just hijack all your input anyway. You don't have to uh, switch keyboards in order to make it happen. However, yeah, when I swapped over to Gboard, I saw that a lot of those features, as Brian put it really well, the way that the keyboard emulates the iOS keyboard is actually really uh, pr- pretty darn neat. Um, and a- another thing that I found, too, that I, I, I don't know if I uh, fully kind of explained is that the text expander keyboard was both uh, slow in the amount of time it took for the whole keyboard to load, but also with every key press, it seemed to be a little bit kind of laggy. Now, I haven't used it in some time, so it's likely it's gotten better. But Gboard felt snappy from day one um, after it loads, <laughs> which yeah, is the main right. trick. So 
so it it keeps things normal enough to make it still feel kind of natural for for users of the iOS keyboard. So in what areas does it attempt to improve? Where does it add things? Yeah, the biggest one that I saw was definitely gesture typing. I used a uh, swipe on my uh, Android phone back back in my Android days. Um, and swipe and did make one for iOS, right? They did, but I had no interest in using that one. Uh, in fact, I hadn't tried gesture typing until uh, since between swipe on Android and again uh, until Gboard uh, here. And I actually found uh, the part of the reason why is because I've been using bigger keyboards, so like. Uh, or bigger mobile devices. So like my iPad, for example, um, I when I tried to use swipe on there for a little while, it was just like, it's, uh, it's I, I may as well type with my fingers. I can do a faster QWERTY there than I can because there's so much uh, distance you have to cover with, uh, with the swiping. I, I uh, concur completely. Even on my 7-inch uh, Android tablet, I use my two thumbs more often than I do one, one-handed gesture typing. Right, right. But on the phone, I think it's really quite nice. I don't use swipe very much. I kind of I remember about it. Actually, I had Gboard for four or five days, and then I'm like, oh right, there's swipe in this, and yeah, then I'm like, oh. oh, I should probably use that a little. So I use it a little bit, but it's I think I'm faster typing. However, swipe is more accurate than me typing sometimes mm-hmm. because I mess up and whatever. But Yes, the swipe is pretty nice. It's interesting to have because I haven't ever used it on a phone. And I know on Android, it's been there for so long. So, And I, I did try to swipe keyboard when third-party keyboards were first available on iOS. But many of the, you know, the reasons we were just saying, I didn't end up using the keyboard. Another thing that I really like is the like inline emoji picker. Uh, and yeah. the, the biggest part of it, too, is like it will predict sometimes an emoji for me when I'm when I'm typing something out. Like if I type dog, I use the dog emoji a lot because I have a dog and um, and dog emojis are really neat. Yeah. You so you could to. type you can type the name of the emoji and it'll suggest it in your um, generally your, your autocorrect bar. Mm-hmm. And that that's a very nice feature. And I have a friend who uses a Samsung Galaxy S5 or something and it has the same thing. So you type it. And so sometimes you can type a word that, oh, there's emoji for this. I didn't remember that. And you just tap it and like, oh, okay, cool. When I was on your phone right. just now and I typed in yo dog, it gave me a dog <laughs> emoji as a suggestion. Aw, that's awesome. So um, in addition to um, swipe and this emoji inline emoji picker, um, if you go to the, the emoji, so there's a little happy face and... Um, you see the emoji. There's also a GIF. So this is a GIF search. Um, Facebook has this in their Messenger app. Um, so this is kind of a similar feature, but this is in the keyboard instead. So you can search GIFs anywhere on Google. I'm assuming it uses its image search. Yeah. It um, pull- and, it, and it tells you what website it's pulling the GIF from. Yep. So you can search a GIF. There are a bunch of categories in the bottom you can um, select from. So here's, you know, thank you, wink, angry, nervous, duh, oops, hungry, hugs. So just tons of things. You can just swipe through. Um you tap on one and it, or like you hold down on one and it copies it, and then you can paste in your message bar where you're typing in. So that works pretty well. Um, and beyond just searching for GIFs, of course, you can just do a generic Google search right from your keyboard. Yeah, so if you tap the big Google icon, you can search anywhere in Google. And so you can just tap, and then it automatically pastes it in. So I just search the word test, for example. And the first thing came up, I tapped it, it copied it, and then also pasted it into the message bar, and then just hit send. So I just um, apparently sent something, Theranos Foyd's two years of Edison blood test results. There you go. Whatever that is. Fascinating stuff. Cool. And so, um, yeah, so Ian's here pasting in some addresses, which is nice. So you can probably search a contact or something and type in that, mm-hmm. or a uh, location of a restaurant or somewhere you're going. So you can have a link to the map. Uh, phone number and the name of the location and this was the big feature that i wasn't expecting from a google keyboard but after i thought about it for a while i was like this is exactly what google needed to do because their big challenge has been how do we get people to search and you know and and make it efficient for those people to be able to search google from ios on android they control the operating system, right? So they were able to make this nice shortcut to Google Now as the long press on the home button. Um, 
But for iOS, it's like, okay, well, either they're going to have to go all the way over to their browser, go to Google and search a thing, or they're going to have to, like, install the Google app. Yeah. And, like, nobody's going to go to that app just to search for things. My mom uses that app more than Safari, actually. That's impressive. I yeah. Uh, I, I see her using it. I'm like, whoa, you use that. Interesting. But, yeah, um, like, be, like, putting it into a keyboard means that you will be able to access this from anywhere that you have a text field. Yeah. So I read some interview or video or some blog post about it with some Google person who, about this app. And they were saying, yeah, so now you can look up something in the middle of whatever you're doing. So if you're on Facebook or texting someone and someone says, oh, wait, what's this thing? You just hit the Google button, type it out. You don't even have to copy paste it to someone. You just mm -hmm. read the inline results right there and you are set. Yeah, that was another thing I found really interesting, especially because like I've been using DuckDuckGo more frequently because you can use oh, those, it. right? Because you can use those like uh, those special combinations, right? That start with an exclamation point to search particular engines. Um, and one of the reasons why I really like that on iOS is that I can I can do that from like the system search bar because it knows that Duck or not DuckDuckGo, yes, DuckDuckGo, that's the one um, is is my is my default. So I can do it like that, and it it already passes through and that's like very close to what this is um but this goes one step further and it might be the thing that brings me back to google for search that's that's a really kind of interesting aspect of it for sure i think you're right ian that this is kind of the thing that google had to do in order to uh it's like the 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 logical step nobody saw coming mm -hmm. uh, to really kind of reassert themselves on ios and uh, i have one final feature to talk about here on the Google or Gboard keyboard. So this, um, there's the, you can swipe left and right on the space bar to change where your cursor is. So I don't know if you've used this too much. Um, let me just type out something. I'm just pasting in words into a search bar from the suggestion. I'm going to read that out just now to see what it says. The following link to my account and the other side is a good. But then you can swipe left and right on the space bar and control where your cursor is. So this is in... Um, contrast to the native one where you hold your thumb or a finger down and you come up with like a magnifying glass and move your cursor that uh -huh. way. So this is a easy way of swiping your cursor around without having to really leave the keyboard. Um, and it's faster than holding your finger down as well. Mm -hmm. And this is a feature I've used. There's a jailbreak tweet called swipe selection or swipe shift carrot, two different ones um, that he used back on iOS probably six and on till I stopped jailbreaking as a, uh, extension on the native apple keyboard and that was quite nice to have and so this is a good inline um speed enhancing way of changing your cursor i agree i really like that and i didn't know that it was available on gboard yeah it's, you know about the system one on the ipad where you have two fingers anywhere on the keyboard and you can change your cursor oh you i did try not know that Go to notes it's excellent actually there there is one thing this made me think of something that gboard does not do um that i really like about the native uh keyboard is that you can split the the ios keyboard into two yep. small, smaller halves if you're typing with two thumbs on either side of the ipad um right and and gboard doesn't do that um which is kind of unfortunate especially since the iPad is the only iOS device that I have, and gesture typing is significantly less useful. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering though if that's if that's like a system level thing where like I I don't know if I the Apple keyboard writing framework would allow you to to do that right because I, I if if I recall correctly I th I think that there is a um that there, that there are like affordances for stuff like pulling in app data to it, which is how like text expander and Gboard can even like exist in the first place. Mm -hmm. And it has but, its catch all allow full access or no access so to, for a keyboard to talk to the internet or probably a clipboard, you know, everything that you want to do. And so most, right. most of these ask for that. Right. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering then, I think this might be what you're getting at Ian, is that like maybe at some point Apple will get more like granular with it and allow for stuff like that but mm -hmm. I, I i i bet it's probably a thing that google just like either didn't want to take the trouble to implement because it's a lot presumably it would be a lot of uh of stuff you'd have to sort out like where in the keyboard to split it and stuff um and and how that affects all the other ways that google gets that keyboard input um that's that's kind of my reading of the situation but. and i have one last thought about this gboard app it uses the roboto typeface which, you know, is fine on Android, but it, it does not match iOS very well, in my opinion. I think the 
San Francisco font would look a little better. Yeah, I'm wondering though if there's because there's a there's a whole big deal about the the uh, the font like license possibly. I guess uh, I don't know because yeah, but other hmm. other app store apps use San Francisco by default. If you don't specify a font, it uses that. Oh yeah, that's that's accurate. That's accurate. I'm wondering if I'm I'm wondering what about that that might that that might be though. Um, I'm wondering if there might be something weird because I've I know other keyboards right. Other keyboards I've seen don't use San Francisco, None of and them. I can't. Hmm. I'm I'm wondering if, like like I know Text Expanders does not or did not seem to last I used it, so I'm wondering if there's something else there that maybe we're just not seeing on 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 that end. In fact, I'm so curious about this. I'm going to mute myself and search the Apple <laughs> Developer Docs for a couple minutes. Um, I I would like to talk about a couple of things that I was really hoping for that I didn't see in uh, Gboard. So coming as a as a primarily Android user, I was really really hoping that like my the personal dictionary that I have accumulated for myself on the Google keyboard on Android, which does synchronize between Android devices using the Google keyboard, uh, I was hoping that that was going to follow me to Gboard. Uh, it does not. I I can't gesture type Alderaan, uh, or you know my sister's name or anything like that. You know, um, what if, what if you add it to the iOS? Um, text shortcut dictionary. I pro- uh, yeah, so it did offer to take a look at my contacts on the iPad to to suggest their names. Um, so I'm not sure if that would include. That probably wouldn't include the um, already existing iOS. Because if you put an alder on in that, it may let you. It might add that to it. Yeah, I'm not sure. But like that's the thing. I don't want to have to add that to all of my different devices if they're if even if that I'm on different. iCloud. But yeah, you need to have one yeah. region. Yeah. I want I want all my platforms to just pretend like they're one platform. Thanks push bullet. Um the other thing um I mean I uh, I guess it's something that I've gotten really used to on the Android keyboard is being able to long press on like the period and have all of the commonly used symbols uh, available in that submenu. So kind of like if you long press on the O and you get all the different types of O's that there exist in all the different language, you know, uh, alphabets, um, the, the the period does the same kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't do that in Gboard. It does. Right. If you're on the iPad, it does let you long press on the on the period to get the question mark and okay. long press on the comma to get the exclamation. Hmm. So that's nice. Yeah, but it's not quite all the symbols that I want. Yeah, and right. Agreed. The... That's another thing that I ran into too. That's something I noticed when I swapped from iOS to Android and and or from Android to iOS and vice versa a little bit. Is that like the way that you access symbols is very very different? Mm-hmm. And um, I'm very much uh, reliant on the way that I shift on the I, I use the shift key on the stock uh, iOS keyboard get those symbols because long pressing just is not the same and I'm, tr- I'm trying to learn I really am but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know I don't know if I'll get there um, and I, I don't know if we're yeah I don't know if we're kind of shifting into the Android keyboard yet um, but yeah I've gotten into the habit of having access to almost everything that I could possibly want to type from right. you know without having to go into like what what amount to sub menus right um, to multiple different keyboards to see all right. of these things. Um, and I, I, it's, it feels really like it unified in a way because like gesture typing is I'm gliding my finger around and long pressing and then moving my finger slightly to get to the symbol that I want feels like just another glide, you know? Right. It's just a glide with a pause at the beginning. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's, a, that's really interesting. That's a different way than I'm used to thinking about it. That's really cool. Hmm. Uh, anything else about Gboard? Uh, see, I'm thinking it would be really cool if you guys, if you guys would tell us a little bit more about what's going on, uh, with the Google keyboard up- upgrade for Android. I think, I think that now's the, now's the best time for it. I would love to do, do that. You ready, Ryan? Do it. Hi, how you doing? So, uh, I think that this is the biggest update to Google's Android keyboard since they introduced gesture typing yep. a long, long time ago. I agree. Um, so first off, they they introduced actually one of the features that we talked about in Gboard is one that's new to the Google keyboard, and that was uh, moving the cursor around by swiping left and right on the space bar. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's actually especially important on Android because 
when you want to move the cursor around on Android, you don't get that nice like magnifying glass mm -hmm. view. Um, so sometimes it's hard, you know, if you got big fat fingers, to see what's underneath your finger, so you know exactly where you are. And uh -huh. if you have your finger way down there on the bottom of the screen, it's not in the way. Unfortunately, nobody's ever going to know that feature is there because it's sort of why would you ever swipe on your keyboard? Yeah, we <laughs> this this episode is actually a good example of the problem right who's going to listen to a, a, a review of a bunch of keyboards except for people who are really really enthusiastic about keyboards and are already going to know all of the features of the keyboards yeah. so i had this keyboard about a week and a half before it actually launched officially because of reasons and um when you got it officially was there any kind of like you know tutorial or was there like do this to do this thing you know any guidance at all I think I think I learned everything that I knew about it by either looking at the change log in Google Play or by just kind of going through all of the different preferences okay. and finding all the different settings and going, oh, hey, that's a thing now. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't have a change log, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so another another new feature, uh, which is kind of kind of a similar thing to moving the cursor is you can delete multiple words by swiping left from the delete key, um, which also, you know, feels very, very much like another gesture, right? Another slide. Um, so, you know, my, my thumb is never stationary when I'm typing on this keyboard. And I really, really like being able to delete multiple words um, just with one swipe to the left. Um, and it and it does a pretty good job of you know not going too far and even if you go too far you can just move your thumb more to the right to bump it back over to you know to the next word over. Um, just like uh, well, kind of similar to what we had before, right? When you're gesture typing, you're going through. Um, it has the one word that it thinks that you're trying to say, and then it's got three other possible suggestions up at the top. And previous to this update, what could you do, Ryan? I don't know. What could you do? You could long press on the middle one to get this gigantic oh, right. list of of yeah. like nine more or so. I remember that. I never actually used that list. I used it probably way more than I should have. Uh, and I know that I used it more than I should have because I feel like I spent more time looking through that list trying to find the one that I actually meant. You could have just than, typed it. Then then deleting and just gesturing that again. So before that update even, which was my preference, is when the word that it should have been was just the one in the middle. Right. So yeah. if I, if and, I, but then so then you only have three suggestions total, the one that it thinks and then two on the sides, right? Right. But now, there's, now, now it's the one that it thinks is just what it is in the text field. Yeah. And then you got three alternates. I don't like that. Okay. I really want the one on the screen to be the one that's <laughs> the, the answer. Um, now, since they took away those nine alternate suggestions in that menu, which is probably a good decision, honestly, um, instead you can drag any of those three suggestions to a trash bin. That appears if you start dragging them. And that is a very useful feature. Now, where do those things get stored? I assume that they're in the keyboard preferences under your personal dictionary. So the anti-dictionary. Kind of yeah, exactly. That's, I love it. The, I never want to use this this word. I'm going to delete half of the English language. I should, I should probably do some of the words that I have used in the past that I don't want to use very often, such as... Uh, for example, here in this in this document, we can see that I wrote the word nice with lots and lots of eyes. Um, if I had typed that on my Android device, it would have probably stored nice with five eyes as a thing that I say. Uh, and, and it would suggest that next time that I gestured the word nice. And it's like, okay, no, <laughs> I don't want to say that. Right. Um, yeah. Let's see. Ah, yes. Okay. This next one is, I'm, I'm kind of really fascinated by this because this is another example of something that Google seems to be taking from CyanogenMod. Um, another good example would be like in the Android N preview, we've got the, uh, paginated, um, quick settings, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and that was previously available in CyanogenMod now coming to regular Android. Um, this feature where uh, you can set the letter keys to have symbols available when you long press them uh, is also something that is was available in CyanogenMod's built-in keyboard 
uh, before it came to the Google keyboard. Um, so we were talking earlier about how, you know, you can long press the period to get to this little list of commonly used symbols. Um, if you prefer, you can have those symbols associated with a key. So like the A key would have the ampersand and the uh, S key would have the uh, slash, et cetera, et cetera, you know, on down. Um I personally, when you turn that on, you know, it, it tells you which symbol is, is associated with which one um, by having a tiny little version of that up into the right, uh, kind of like how they have the numbers just above the top row. Yep. I think that it's really cluttered. Yeah. Uh, and I definitely, I turned it on, took a look at it, and I was like, nope, going back. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, but it's nice that it's, it's, it's there as an option. For those people who um, really, really, really want a BlackBerry but just can't have it. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Uh, Priv anybody? No. Oh. Um, they now have a one-handed mode for larger devices. It's pretty neat. Ironically, my Shield tablet, even though it has the new version of the keyboard, that's not an option on it? That's the one device that I need it on, right? Well, I mean, of course, because, I mean, Google just, just can't handle those kinds of multi-device screen resolutions. I Yeah, I don't understand why it's different, Why why that, what's going on. Yep. I don't know. Um, here's one that I wasn't expecting. You can change the height of the keyboard. So if you want, you can, if, if you need to be able to, to see all the keys and have them be nice and big, you could have it be really tall and, and take up more of the screen. Um, I, I set it to mid short. So just a little bit shorter than it, it is by default. Um, cause I don't feel, I, it doesn't feel too cramped and it gives me just that little bit extra of stuff that I can see above. I got an easy solution for that. Get a bigger phone. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. You have time. you give terrible advice. I know. <laughs> um, and then finally, the the symbol slash number menus have changed up a bit. Um, so this is in the in the rare case where you have to type a symbol that isn't available, you know, by long pressing on the period. Um, so previously, what it was is you would uh, hit the way lower left hand corner. It would bring you to a screen that has all the numbers and then the most commonly used symbols. And then there was another menu that you could go into that has some like obscure symbols like the tilde and the bar and a bunch of like currencies. Just want you to know that I was in the second symbol section very frequently because turns out I need left and or, you know, greater than and less than a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so now, in addition to those two. We also have a number pad with all of the math symbols along the edges. Kind of uh, nice. Ironically, less than and greater than are not in there, even though those are kind of math. You right? can't really use those in the calculator, though. I get. Well, I guess. Um, so we used to be able to see something sort of like this occasionally if Android detected that you were in a text field that was meant for numbers. Yes. It's so like if you're typing in a phone number in the it context. It still exists. Sort of. right. Yeah. Um, but now you can manually go into yeah. a number pad if you want to, which mm -hmm. is, I mean, that's nice. Um, also, uh, new addition to the symbols key views is they've got um, up where you would normally have those three suggestions, word suggestions, you now have uh, a row of commonly used emoji. So if you just want to quickly get one of those emojis, uh, you can go to the symbols instead of going all the way, like, long press on the enter key and going to the uh, emoji thing. Has somebody looked at what those emoji are? Are those the same reactions as Facebook? Oh, I'm not sure. It'd be pretty funny. I don't use Facebook, so I don't know. I don't watch TV, so I don't know. Oh, wait, you mean the when you long press on the like button to yeah. get a reaction? Oh, no, I don't think these are... Well, but the analogous. representations of those things. So, like, happy, excited, I don't know what winking Winky can face. be. Sad, angry... You know, there's there's some overlap. I guess the winky face would Facebook be like sassy. Has, has the like the the love uh, love is the heart. There's the okay, laughing. Yeah, there's, there's no love here. There's a sad with a tear. No, there's a sad. Uh, I don't. There's remember. depressed. Let apparently, me go on Facebook and see. I pretty much only ever use like and love on on Facebook. I try not to. So there's angry, sad, wow, haha, love, and like. Which one should I like Max Fierke's newest status with? All of them. So I'm pretty positive on this update, um, especially because of the moving things around with the cursor and uh, being able to delete multiple 
words with a you know a gesture left from the delete key. Those are great features. However, they'll never be used by pretty much anyone. Right, but we're doing this review for power users as well. Yeah, I'm just just telling you the truth. <laughs> That's true. So I want to let you know. Well, the vast majority of people also don't gesture type, even though it's available. I think a lot more people use swipe gesturing than will ever know that there's some kind of magic left and right space bar. Mm. Yeah. I mean, swipe is a thing. It was a phenomenon. Everybody knows about swipe. They might not know what it's called, yeah. but they just do it. But, I, yeah, I think the people who really care about being able to type well, efficiently, whatever you want to call it, on a phone, are going to be looking through the, the settings, and, and we'll probably find those. There's probably like things. 25 people. Yeah, I'm one of them. Okay. I'm 125th of the... <laughs> of, of that one percent or whatever so you mentioned uh some stuff here about uh looking different yeah when i the the first inkling that i had that something was up uh i don't think that i noticed that the google keyboard was one of the you know many apps that updated all at once um but as soon as i started typing i was like wait a minute this is different because it 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 feels it feels different um the the gesture uh trail that follows you when you're when you're gesture typing it's not like completely solid anymore it's kind of got this more of a transparency almost kind of a grainy look um so it's kind of kind of softer um there's rounded edges on the keys when they do have edges that show up so when web 2.0 what rounded rounded edges that's not a reference that i get okay um the hollow theme is no longer an option good um yeah it's over yeah yeah i agree um and then you can also choose to have visible keyboarders everywhere uh i thought it was kind of ugly so, so i turned it i off. haven't actually looked at these themes yet but is there true black mode yet no there's just hollow white and hollow dark just like before how or, hard is it it's okay i think the dark one's okay it's dark enough for me no but it's it's green like there's this blue green goo sure. i want black I have an AMOLED screen. Give it to me now. Well, you know what's amazing, Ryan, is I'm sure that somebody else has made a true black keyboard if you really want it. I've tried so many keyboards and I hate them all because they have a bunch of garbage in them, like GIFs and like little picture things. I don't want any of that nonsense. So, Gboard? <laughs> yes, that. I don't want that one. <sighs> Ryan, you're so mad. It makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, everyone, it's a character. <laughs> yep. So now the question is, Will you be using this app as your main keyboard, or this keyboard as your main keyboard? Of course. Yeah, definitely. It's the default keyboard. <laughs> I have no choice. That was a, g a given. Brandon, what about you? So I think I'm going to use it more than I thought I would. I don't think I'll use it more than the default. But um, if nothing else, it's because on my iPad, I use a hardware keyboard. And the weird thing about hardware keyboards is that you can't change which software keyboard you're using on a hardware keyboard. You can try. I have. It doesn't work very well. Uh, so the only keys I get, the only features I get out of it are whatever my Apple Bluetooth keyboard will let me do. But on my phone, uh, I think I'll end up using it quite a bit. I'm actually getting more addicted to swipe every time I use it, um, or the, the swipe-like feature of Gboard. Yep. So I might, I might just end up doing that, despite uh, perhaps my better judgment. So I think I will end up using it, yeah. I think I'll leave it as my default one for my iPhone for an undetermined amount of time. So we'll see what happens. I, I've definitely left it as the default on my iPad, um, which isn't like a super important decision for me because that's not a huge part of my life. Um, mm. But I have had, because we use the, the iPad for people to sign in uh, when they come to gaming club, and I've had a few students come up to me and they're like, this this is different. This looks different. What's different about this? And I'm like, well, glad you asked. Teaching <laughs> moment. <laughs> Sure. Nice. I think it's also an indoctrination moment, but okay. I indoctrinate everybody I touch. <laughs> Turns out. I could tweet that. That sounded weird. <laughs> I don't touch my students. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> on, that, on that note, I think, uh, you know, to, to uh, bar borrow the ending from Top Gear, on that bombshell, it's time to end. Uh, I, th I think, uh, I think. Yeah, it was cool talking with you guys about this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not often in the Google ecosystem any longer, so I think I think we got some some interesting stuff here. And this was the first second opinion that the two of you were on, right? Yep. Yeah, I was, think that is correct. This is exciting. Yeah, aren't you supposed to do like all sorts of second opinions on various things that I don't remember anymore, like your Twitter? Yeah, yeah. Twitter clients. Uh, right. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I've been in the Slack channel since second opinion was started. 
I just Indeed. haven't been on an episode yet. Yeah, I've been on every Slack channel that's ever been created. But I, I wasn't on anything. the one when you came to Morris. I think that was a Slack channel. Well, it wasn't a channel. It was a private channel. Oh, oh right, yeah. right. I've been on every one. Cool. Yeah. I was on that one. <laughs> yeah, you were. So, uh, how do we end these uh, second opinions? Uh, well, first off, listeners, um, if you have something that you want us to review, uh, hit us up in that little contacts button on the uh, on the show notes. Reminder, that is thenexus.tv slash SO6. Um, and if you want to review something for us, you want to be on an episode, hit us up as well. We would love to hear from you. Now, everybody, where can we find you guys on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at underscore Brian Mitchell underscore uh, or my website, which is just updated, at, which is brianm.me. You can find me, Ian R. Buck, at ianrbuck.com, which will hopefully exist before this episode goes up. And that'll have links to everywhere that I exist. You can find me at uh, on, on the Twitter sphere as Brandon underscore NN. Uh, and the corresponding thing, if you swap out the underscore for a dot, on the interwebs, which is now fancy and uh, runs with Ghost, at least for the time being. Who knows, by the time you check it, by the time this episode is released, I might have decided to scrap all that and make something fancy and react. For more on this, listen to the next episode of Podkids. And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryanmar, and of course, on contextual.link. <laughs> Uh, so awesome. Have a good one. All of our demands. Have a good one, guys.